The world of sports has been <laughs> embroiled in controversy lately thanks to accusations that allege brazen acts of cheating. And we're talking specifically about sports that wouldn't otherwise get a great deal of press attention. Sports that some maybe wouldn't consider to be sports at all. And they are now dominating headlines in the world's largest publications because the allegations are so outrageous, the public cannot look away. Now, of course, there was the chess cheating scandal, which is still playing out, and that involved two grandmasters facing off against each other before the reigning champion quit in protest, accusing his opponent, Hans Niemann, of cheating. And of course, the only logical scenario was that Hans Niemann was utilizing a device typically used for pleasure to instead feed him information about moves that he should make. Similar accusations have now been made in the field of competitive poker playing, where recently a woman named Robbie Jade Liu stunned an audience online by betting on a ridiculously poor hand while heads up with a competitor named Garrett Edelstein. Accusations were immediately made about the use of a vibrating device, but Edelstein did stop short of claiming that it was inside of his opponent's asshole. So yeah, despite these two controversies dominating headlines and making their respective sports sports seem a lot cooler than they actually are. Nothing could prepare us for the intensity of Major League Fishing <laughs> and the lengths that some anglers will go to in order to have an advantage over their opponents. Mm -hmm. That's right, everyone. The world of competitive fish catching has been rocked by scandal after an angler competing in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail Tournament was accused of stuffing dead fish with weights and also more dead fish stuffing dead fish into other dead fish to make it appear as though their haul was much larger and heavier than it actually was. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but this time it wasn't just words being tossed around. The cheater was confronted directly and evidence was produced in front of shocked onlookers in dramatic fashion as a fellow competitor sliced open the fish, the winning fish, and revealed what appeared to be lead balls crammed inside. Mm -hmm. Sounds ridiculous. But when there's tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line, people will do some really dumb shit in order to win. And it's not like, oh, wow, how'd that get there? That fish must have just swallowed a large lead ball. No, there were lead balls and store-bought fish fillets inside of every one of this man's fish. Yeah, and it, it, it was a duo. Um, and this isn't the first time that they've been accused of cheating. And it is apparently far from the first time that anyone in the sport of fishing has been accused in major tournaments like this of cheating using tactics like this and some that are even crazier. And so like this was a this was a team so they you know you would assume that they knew that both of them were in on this. Um but you would still hope. but still strange. Oh yeah, that would be terrible for the teammate to be like, yeah. "Look, I had no idea." But apparently it was so like obvious that just picking up the fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah there's something in there. You can feel the balls in it apparently. Maybe don't be so obvious about it. Yeah, well, the steel or the, the lead weights they're using were like... <laughs> they're huge. Giant. They were like little cannonballs. Yeah, they're like the weights that you would use on like deep sea fishing, uh, yeah. like catching sharks or something. I have no idea. Next time, use bullets. And, and honestly, explaining this controversy, it doesn't really do it any justice because video of the altercation is so outrageously over the top that you would assume someone had been killed in competition. These men are mad and uh, it's infectious. Yes. And you really feel for them. They they feel that their their favorite hobby, their favorite sport, has been desecrated by well, dishonesty. And I, I look, I get where they're coming from. This is a competition with thousands of dollars in the line. Yeah. Like when this is all you do, this is your livelihood. And someone coming in and stuffing a beautiful, delicious fish with disgusting weights in order to fool everyone into thinking they're the best angler. What a travesty. I'd be angry too. Maybe not this angry, but. Let's just watch. A fillet fish. Look at this. A fillet, yeah. A fillet fish. A walleye fillet. They've been doing this shit for years. Cheating motherfuckers, man. Yeah, so it seems really intense. And sure, pride and money will do that to people. Hell, if this was your sport, you'd be pissed too. We get it. And if it seems like a pretty archaic way to cheat, it definitely is. 
And cheating in the sport of fishing is apparently so prolific that anglers have been asked for years to take polygraph tests in order to finalize their results. Why not just run the fish through a metal detector? It seems like that would at least be the same cost as putting every no, top angler through No, I a guarantee you, at any <laughs> large fishing event, one of those people also has a hobby of going down to the beach with a metal detector yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, looking for whatever. So just have that guy bring his metal detector and wave it in front of each fish. But still, yeah, apparently this is such a huge problem that they're like, no, get on the damn lie detector and prove that you're not cheating. So back in 2016, even a regional tournament director said it was a necessity to polygraph these people. Damn. Uh, maybe it's just the people involved in the sport. Listen, I'm a fisherman myself, so I can say this and it's okay. We're a bunch of fucking liars, <laughs> every one of us. You can't never trust a fisherman. Mm-mm. Uh, so back in 2016, one of these regional tournament directors said the following to a local newspaper. If we didn't demand polygraphs, people would cheat. Everyone knows if you win, you must show up with your fish and at the award ceremony and take a polygraph if it's required. If you fail to show or refuse to take the test, you forfeit. Polygraph tests are not... Uh, no, they're not. Not really... Rock solid mm -hmm. uh, either way. Anyway, apparently stuffing fish with weights, it's just the tip of the cheating iceberg when it comes to competitive fishing. In that same article, the tournament director said he, quote, recalled hearing of people with scuba diving equipment on Lake Erie who caught bass beforehand and put them in cages underwater and then hooked and reeled them in during a tournament. <laughs> so in that scenario, you can't just go scanning oh, wow. the metal detector, Elliot. Yeah. You have to have someone watching every boat Interesting. Someone incorruptible, uncorruptible, yeah. to watch every boat and make sure that no one's pulling up baskets filled with delicious fish. Man, what a travesty. Beautiful fish. Uh, in this particular tournament, though, uh, it seems to be just the unbe unbelievable weight of the fish based on their size that tipped off the other competitors. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, from SB Nation, everyone was having a good time celebrating the catches being weighed until a silence fell over the crowd when Jacob Runyon and his partner Chase Kaminsky brought their fish to the scales. The best single fish up to that point was 7.23 pounds, but Runyon and Kaminsky's catches kept exceeding it for seemingly no reason. Ain't no way, one fisherman says in relation to their weigh-in. Damn, 33, another quips, seemingly stunned by the result too. For minutes, you can hear lots of doubt coming from those in attendance. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Uh -huh. uh, shortly before everything exploded, there's someone caught on tape who pretty much nails what happened. Fuck that. That ain't a seven pound fish, he says. Check the stomach on that one. Almost on cue, tournament director Jason Fisher, hilarious name for a tournament director. He was, yeah, assigned fisherman at birth. Uh -huh. Calls for a knife and begins to inspect their catch. And he's stunned. We got weights in fish, he yells with the crowd quickly engulfing Runyon, who stands emotionless while weights are pulled from his fish. The crowd begin jeering, obviously furious at what took place. The prize money for the tournament comes directly from entry fees, meaning in a very real way, the cheaters tried to steal from their fellow competitors. How low can you get? Quote, all these years, all these years you were losers, one angler quips, referring to prior events Runyon and Kaminsky had won. A statement by tournament organizers expressed regret and apologized for missing any prior cheating, but was thankful the pair were caught in this one instance. But it doesn't stop there, uh, because aside from this being a very dumb, ultimately funny way to cheat, these guys have been competing and winning for years. And now wow. their whole careers. Yeah, how deep does this uh, dishonesty go? Yeah, uh, it could potentially make their entire lifetime winnings fraudulent. And it could also land them in jail. Yeah, so uh, an investigation into the fishermen is being launched. A spokesperson for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources told CNN that they are preparing a report for the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office. It might seem silly to escalate to this level, but the duo have won over $300,000 in fishing competitions in the Ohio area, defrauding competitors and the events themselves. Good Lord, this could lead to very stiff penalties should charges be pressed against the two. Yeah. What are you in for? <laughs> you don't understand. I was stuffing fish with weights in order to win amazing competitions. That's the kind of crime you don't want your fellow prisoners knowing about. No. There's like uh, kid stuff and then uh, cheating at fishing tournaments. You'll be shunned. I might have set multiple Pet Boys locations on fires, but I would never cheat like my cellmate here. I mean, lead fishing. weights? Come on. If you're going to cheat, 
Take a little piece of crack cocaine, yeah, put, put, it on, on, put it on the hook. And I then, ain't uh, never seen a bass go so crazy in my life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to quickly circle back on the polygraph test stuff. Uh, yes, like we said, they're far from accurate and they can very easily give both false negative and false positive results, especially if you're dealing with a sociopath. Mm -hmm. They can also be manipulated. The results are all over the place. Nothing could prove that more than the results of this duo's polygraph test from just last year for the same tournament. Yes, this same duo was accused of cheating last year and took a total of four polygraph tests, according to Cleveland.com, passing three and failing one, resulting in a disqualification. Uh, at the time, the pair consulted with an attorney because they said the failed tests hurt their reputations. <laughs> I knew we had to get legal counsel and fight our disqualification in the fall brawl. Our reputation means the world to us, and we would never cheat. It wasn't just the loss of a very expensive boat we had rightfully won, said Runyon. It was having our names drugged through the mud and smeared on social media and among walleye fishermen around the area. Well, this has really got a sting for them. If they were only doing this for their amazing reputations, yeah. I'm sorry to say they've been tarnished. No one's going to sell these men bait for like a 150-mile <laughs> race. Get out! Your money's no good here, Runyon. Get the hell out of here. No one cheats in my state and gets away with it. Anyways, while we both have uh, a new appreciation for sports that we once thought were pretty boring, honestly, it's time to move over to another issue that keeps popping up for no reason other than people really, really want to believe the dumbest shit ever because mm -hmm. it aligns with their narratives. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is where the country is headed. And uh, yes, it's very sad to say, but for whatever reason, people still think that uh, school-age children are uh, turning into animals and they need litter boxes to shit in. Joe Biden's America. Yeah. It's... I did that. <laughs> yeah, they, all of the litter the, boxes that that's going to have a bumper sticker on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is, of course, complete and utter nonsense that only exists in order to give com conservative boomers something to complain about. Yeah, I mean, we first talked about this at least six months ago because it was just something going around on Facebook and it's like every school that was accused of it, like the school administrators, and these are presumably like, you know, conservative people in conservative towns are just yeah. like, no, we, we looked into it. There's no no evidence at all of this. Please stop wasting our time. And then it would just move over to another school district where the same yeah. people were like, well, I heard on Facebook. You hear they're putting litter boxes in school so the cat children can poop right in the middle of class and spend the next 40 minutes bathing themselves with their tongues. Biden's America. And you hate to see how things have turned out, but this is very real. And this is Joe Biden's Rome America. is burning. We're living in Weimar. <laughs> So yeah, obviously we've reported on this before, and anyone who saw these rumors the first time around seemed to have a, a pretty good laugh if they were normal, because obviously this is ridiculous. Nothing more than an urban legend. And as soon as these rumors were refuted the first time around, people would realize how silly all this was. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, alas, we live in hell, and parents across the country are still very upset that public schools are not only allowing young students to defecate in litter boxes in school, but are encouraging it and providing these boxes for the students. Anyway, yeah, yeah, the furry children legend seems to pop up frequently on the Facebook pages of conservative boomers, with even NBC News' Ben Collins adding that, quote, my grandson's high school has a litter box for furries, is my friend's uncle works in Nintendo style urban legend for older people on Facebook. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yes. Well, not me, but my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, not our school, but the school, the, the rival school, they're having a big, furry yeah. pooping litter box scandal. I heard about it, so it's got to be true. No, my girlfriend doesn't go to this school. She goes to this other school where everyone shits in a box. Um, what this, In Canada. Now that we're saying it out loud, what this is going to turn into is rival schools pranking other schools by actually placing litter boxes in their bathrooms and claiming oh, no. that it's there for uh, furry children. Oh, no. Uh, anyway, here's some actual examples of this uh, reposted to Twitter. I have to put this out there. My grandson's high school has put a cat litter box in the boy's bathroom for the, I'm assuming, boy who identifies as a cat. What the hell is going on in these schools? Here's another one. Just heard last week that this same thing is allegedly going on in our local high school and that there is even a litter box placed in the restroom for that person. I like the, the use of allegedly, though. <laughs> yeah, well, it gives them a little space to I don't back get, out of it. I don't want to get sued for defamation or anything, but... Uh, here's another one. Is it really true that there's a bathroom with a litter box in it at blank high school? 
to accommodate these wackos that identify as furries? Just asking questions. Mm -hmm. Furries are in blank schools. So my niece just got home from school and has been talking about the furry in her class that was disrupting the class and freaked her out a little. So yes, everyone, they are in our schools. And yes, the subject of the litter box has came up here in blank high school. It's crazy, but it's true. He was barking and everything, she said. <laughs> she said he even told them to ask all the questions they wanted about furries, and he sat there and answered them. Okay, so this is like, <laughs> this is some straight up Ralph Wiggum seeing babies at Springfield Elementary. And then uh, the furry barked at her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but even in his own scenario, the furry comes off more empathetic and better than he does, essentially saying to their fellow students in this made up scenario, uh, this may seem weird to you, but I'm here to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> yeah. I like in this made-up scenario, they're like... Uh, and is there... There's not even a litter box element to this one. No, it's, it's just, just like... That, and, and they did address the litter box oh, thing. Oh. So... Well... Yeah, because obviously mean, like, one of the questions would be, well, where do you go to the bathroom? And uh, this made-up person would say, uh, well, obviously in the state-sanctioned litter box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that was given to me personally by the governor. I, I poop in the Biden box. Yes. Yes, it's made of gold, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh-huh. And does George Soros pay me every time I use it? Yes. Of course. Uh-huh. And then, of course, there's the angry Trump guy who's wondering why nothing is being done about something that actually isn't happening at all. So I just learned that a student at Blank High School wants to identify as a cat. And the high school has put a litter box in a girl's bathroom for them. Are you serious? My first question is, who has to clean the litter box? My second question is, why the administrator is still retaining their job? Why hasn't the school board kicked them out the door for being incompetent and cowardly? And then I'd ask, why have the school board members not been petitioned to resign their positions? I'm going one by one. Uh, let's answer the questions. Are you serious? No, this is an urban legend. Just because Marjorie Taylor Greene says something is true doesn't make it true. Who has to clean the litter box? No one. It doesn't exist. Why does the administrator still have their job? Because literally nothing has happened. Why haven't school board members been asked to resign? because nothing has happened. And also, you're not allowed in the PTA meeting because you don't have children at this school. Please stop posting. Oh God, I can't remember the context. Uh, I, I saw a great post the other day. It wasn't about litter boxes, but it was uh, it was someone at a PTA meeting somewhere who was like hooting, hollering mad and uh, caught on video. And he, he does not have a kid at the school, yeah. but he is a proud uncle, a, uh -huh. oh, a yes. concerned mm -hmm. uncle. Yes. And that and his like lower third, when he, of course, immediately got booked on Fox News, was concerned uncle. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. The uncles are concerned. When you've upset the aunts and uncles of this world, yeah. you've done real damage. Before. Yeah. My brother wasn't so busy providing for his family. He'd be here, too. But as the uncle of a child, I have to I have to speak for on this family's behalf. All right. So here's what I saw on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and why isn't the parent of the child here? The made up parent of the made up child is busy doing, uh, laying rebar in Florida, helping the hurricane victims to rebuild. Do you have a problem with that? Are you gonna look into my story now that you know that a hero's involved? See, this is why we need uncle's rights. <laughs> uncle's rights have been trampled they on extend. for too long. Yeah, they extend now. Mm -hmm. But the perpetuation of the furry litter box in schools myth continues and this time it made its way back into national headlines because everyone has a fucking goldfish brain yeah uh, this happened recently in both tennessee and minnesota over in minnesota the gop nominee in the governor's race scott jensen was speaking to supporters at an event where he seemed to validate the hoax saying in a recorded video but what about education what are we doing to our kids? Why are we telling elementary kids that they get to choose their gender this week? Why do we have litter boxes in some of the school districts so kids can pee in them? Because they identify as a furry? We've lost our minds. We've lost our minds. You, you certainly have, sir. Yeah, this, you certainly this guy have. has lost his mind. There's got to be some like conservative weirdo who's actually gone to the bathroom in a litter box now just to try it out. Yeah. Well, I don't get what all the hubbub's about, but I'm open-minded. I'll give it a shot. I would love for one of them to stand up in a meeting and be like, and I tried it myself. Yes, it's, it, it feels awesome. It's unnatural. <laughs> it's too pleasurable. Uh, but over in Tennessee, the phenomenon made its way onto local news stations, causing headlines like this one. Tennessee school officials. No, we did not give litter boxes to students identifying as furries. And let's just read from this one. School officials from two mid-state school systems, as well as the Tennessee Department of Education, say there is no evidence to support a claim that a Tennessee state senator made during a legislative committee meeting this week. 
that claim that some rural school districts in Tennessee are giving litter boxes to children identifying as furries, a real subculture consisting of people who like to dress up as, and in some cases behave like, animal characters. Senator Janice Bowling, Republican from Tullahoma, made the claims during a meeting of the Government Operations Joint Subcommittee on Education, Health, and General Welfare on Tuesday. Representative Mary Littleton, Republican of Dixon, first brought up the topic of furries while discussing the Tennessee Public Charter School Commission. Quote, do charter schools allow the furries to come as a furry into class, which is children identifying as cats or dogs? No, ma'am, Stowell replied. Well, we're hearing that's a problem across the state now. So, and I think it's a big problem, Littleton replied. <sighs> so Senator Bowling followed up with questioning of her own on the topic, calling it a growing crisis. Unfortunately, I'm hearing this in my rural districts where maybe schools are not fully disclosing that they're allowing children who identify as snakes, <laughs> cats, whatever. They're providing litter boxes for the cats, and obviously it's very disruptive to the learning process, Bowling said. But News Channel 5 could not find any evidence to back up either Bowling or Littleton's claims. Uh, during the committee meeting Tuesday, Senator Bowling did not clarify from which district she heard the rumor about staff <laughs> handing out litter boxes, and emails to both her and her assistant were not immediately returned on Friday. You, you'd think she'd want to get this information out there as quickly as possible. Yes, here's the evidence. But officials from several school districts in Bowling Senate district say they have no evidence to back up her claim. This is just a, a shittier, dumber version of the satanic panic. Yes. Uh, and it's even worse that it's not just dumb parents in school board meetings or on Facebook. It's actual These are elected senators, officials, yeah. senators, and then a, uh, a candidate for governor. It's almost like they want there to be uh, litter boxes. In well, schools. yes, because it would help their campaign because they would be there to stop it. It's the same way like they they want uh, like eight year olds to be getting. Uh, sex reassignment surgery, yeah, yeah. even though that's absolutely not fucking happening. Well, this actually, it, it benefits them in a very easy way because their constituents are obviously stupid if they believe it, but it creates a problem that they can solve, and the entire time, they've done nothing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, once we elected them, no more litter boxes in schools. Yeah, it's the easiest thing. Is like, uh, oh, we solved the litter box problem. You won't find any litter boxes at any school. I guarantee I it. I dare you to go down to that school right now, now that I'm elected, and try to find a litter box. We get results here in the Republican Party. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, obviously, this saga is far from over. Probably never going to end. Yeah. Um, and uh, it won't be finished until every school in the country is forced to refute the claims that haven't even reached their district yet. Very normal country we have here. Very mm -hmm. normal country with normal things going on. Yep. And it's October. You know what that means in an election year? October surprises. Real, fake, otherwise, doesn't matter. It's going to happen. The, the, the October surprise today was uh, Herschel Walker's ridiculous son disowning him. Yeah, Very. publicly on Twitter yeah. uh, for lying about an abortion that yeah. he paid for 10 years ago. Christian Walker is the most fascinating character in politics. Well, because he's like, he's uh, right wing as well. He's extremely right wing. Yeah. But he's also uh, just fabulously gay. Yeah. And unashamedly. And, and God bless him for that. But I don't know how he squares those two, uh, those two worlds and identities. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's young. He's maybe still figuring himself out. But um, but uh, yeah, today seemed to be a little too much for yeah. Christian Walker because his father, Herschel Walker, hero of Georgia, who is completely ruining his legacy. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's what his son's biggest problem is. It's just like, like, dad, like you were considered like one of the greats until you ran for office. And now like every shitty yeah, thing you've ever done. Yeah, one of the things like we begged you not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then he kind of came out swinging with after the abortion thing where he's just like, you have at least four children, one of which you left. Yeah, no, it's like abandoned. every week this man, like a, a new illegitimate son just dropped. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Every week that goes by, something, some topic that he stands for is refuted by his own actions. And then they ask him about it and he's like, the man, listen, CTE is a serious problem. Yes. Every answer this man gives to an interview question is absolutely incomprehensible. You almost feel bad for him. Yeah. It's all very weird all around. He's probably going to win. <laughs> <laughs> His name goes a long way yeah. in Georgia. Herschel so, Walker, hell yeah. Yeah. It's, it, he might win. Yeah. Woo. I also love to, it's just like, well, you know, it was, I forget what year it was, it was 2009 or something like that. But it was, oh, I was, but like, dude, Herschel Walker was like 45 then or something. It's not like Herschel Walker did something at yeah. like, at like my 22 youthful, or 18 or my 15. My youthful or, indiscretions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, you're like 50 something years old. Yeah. Hell of a base or a base football player though. Didn't he also like try his hand at MMA and like do okay at it? Didn't like 
Mark Zuckerberg's going a little overboard with the MMA stuff recently. I oh, think he, he? he rented out like an entire building and had his own little private uh, UFC match, I believe. Something like that happened. This you know weekend. what? The more time he spends on that, the less time he spends on ruining the world. Let this yeah. man, let him fight. <laughs> yeah, give him his own UFC arena somewhere and just let him do his thing. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Anyway, while we're at it, why not just throw some more really dumb news on you? Here's some Kanye West news. Always a joy. Mm -hmm. Put it on the pile because on Monday of this week, Kanye apparently hosted a surprise fashion show for his Yeezy brand during Paris Fashion Week. Uh, during this fashion show, Kanye had the models dress up in White Lives Matter shirts while he did the same alongside political commentator Candace Owens, who joined him for the occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing was odd. There's no clear-cut explanation as to why he did this, though you've got to assume that Adidas and The Gap are probably sweating a little bit right now because it really seems as though these designs are the debut of a new collection, one that I'm sure they'll both be fighting over to have not on their shelves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a plastic bag on the ground. Uh, here at Adidas, store. The Gap, we will defer to you on this. You can you can have this deal. Actually, you know, you've been with Kanye longer. Why don't you guys take this collection? I, I couldn't possibly. Well, you see, the problem with displaying it in the gap is that Kanye demands that all of the clothes be located in garbage bags on the floor. So you're not going to get that uh, cool con display. Construction bags, actually. <laughs> you're not going to get that cool display like you would at the Adidas store. We want these White Lives Matter store or shirts in the window of every Adidas store in the country. He's being Marketing provocative. Point. He's also he's just completely out of touch at this point, which is yeah. sad. Uh and uh, Candace Owens doesn't believe in anything. She believes in the almighty American This is dog. right up her alley. If this you, is, this is not shocking The fact that Candace Owens is taken seriously by anyone uh, when her past is one Google search away uh, proving that she doesn't actually believe in anything and she tried her hand at being a political figure multiple times before going the conservative route caught on. Like, I just don't get how anyone gives a shit about what this person thinks. Literally, he said it, uh, well, he used the clip in his own song. It's provocative. Gets the people going. It does. Hopefully, people are going out the exit, away from uh, his fashion line and music, but uh, who knows? Who knows? I miss the old Kanye. I, yes, he also said that in one of his songs, and I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Uh, please stay tuned for some tech news we have coming up. And if you haven't already, please watch our most recent episodes. Uh, we've got Weekly Weird News and News Dump, two banger episodes waiting right there for you. Check both of those out. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and a like. Thank you to the 5,000. And uh, we'll see you soon for some more news. Bye. Bye-bye.